Kodachrome 64, how to develop it, no BS. Well, it's 2022 and I've developed at this point five rolls of Kodachrome film and I've come up with a system that works most of the time. Keep in mind, this is a discontinued film. The stuff that I'm gonna be shooting right now expired in March of 1989. The two other videos I did on Kodachrome were your typical landscape vlog type photographer type of videos where we went off on an adventure once in the winter, once in the summer, took a bunch of photos, then came back, processed, and they were long. This is a short and to the point video specifically on how to develop Kodachrome film. I did have to go out and shoot some exposures. It was brutally cold. I didn't even finish the roll. But what you're really here for is to watch the processing and to see if you can process Kodachrome 64 yourself at home. Let's get to it. We need a few things. We need a canister to develop the film in. This is a light tight Patterson canister. It has the reel in it to hold the film. Right now, this is set for 120 or 220 size film. These are adjustable. This just pushes down all the way to there and it's 35 millimeter. We're gonna remove the film out of this canister and then place it into the slots right here. There's these one-way mechanisms right here. We simply shuttle this film like this and it just starts to advance. These only let the film go one way, so it'll advance the film. This then goes into this canister, the lid will go on, and it'll be totally light tight. All of this has to be done in total darkness to be certain that no additional light exposes this film. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of this inside this jacket. I have a black lightweight jacket here and it's black on the outside and black on the inside. I'm going to clip up the hood right here to make sure there's no light tight, drawstring the bottom to make sure it's very light tight, fold that up, everything will be inside this, and then I'm gonna reach my hands inside the arms and work everything inside this dark area. And again, that's to make sure that absolutely no light gets into this. Well, let's get to it, lights out. To develop film, you need a place with some running water and a countertop and a surface to work with. My own home, I found that our laundry room works well. Right now, our laundry room is pretty trashed. I've got a few household projects going on, but we'll make do, we'll make it work. The film is sealed in this. It's in our light tight canister. With the Kodachrome, the first thing I'm going to do and the first thing I recommend you do is do a water wash on the film. And that'll help to loosen that black Remjet backing that is on the Kodachrome and also remove the first yellow layer of dye off this Kodachrome film as well. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I have my faucet right here and we're gonna put some water into, into this canister and just let it be for a couple of minutes. Using the develop app that I have in my phone, I've already programmed in Kodachrome film as black and white using black and white developer. We're gonna use HC110. I get it from the Film Preservation Project and they have it listed as FPP110. It's a liquid developer, very easy to mix, to dilute and create a working solution. You use dilution B, so it's 15 milliliters of this and 485 milliliters of water. That ends up being about two cups, which is what this canister holds. I've tried two different developers with Kodachrome film as black and white. I've tried Kodak's D76 and HC110, FPP110, and I found that I really prefer this developer. I get more contrast and it's fast. We're looking at four minutes and 30 seconds development time, one minute of stop bath, and then seven minutes of fixer, and then a wash afterwards. So let's mix some of this up. I'm going to pour this to get my 15 milliliters of solution. Now we're gonna pour this in to get our 500 milliliters of working solution. Let's dump the water out of this and see what it looks like. Wow, kinda looks like I'm taking a leak. We're ready to go to start pouring the developer in and starting the timer. Let's do it.
leave this in the sink. We agitate this when the time comes to say we need to. Every 30 seconds, this timer will go. We need to then agitate the film. And our time is up. We need to pour the developer out. I do consider this HC110 or FPP110 developer a one-shot, but it's still very, very economical. We'll pour in our stop bath, which is basically a dilute acetic acid solution. What that does is it stops the action of the developer and helps prolong the life of the fixer chemical as well. Now our stop bath is done. Start my timer and pour in the fixer. It's going to need to be in there for about seven minutes. Our time is almost up on this fixing of this Kodachrome film, and then we'll see if there's actually any images on this at all. Now, I only shot about half the roll. This was a 36 exposure roll, so there's going to be quite a bit with nothing on it. But what I'm really concerned with as leader is to see if there's much base fog in the film. That's one of the things we really don't know with very, very old f expired film is a lot of times there's a base radiation or a base fog that just appears in this film, kind of an overall grayness to it instead of the negative being um, in totally clear in what would be the shadow areas. Um, because the, those areas have received no light exposure, so the shadow areas are totally clear, the blacks are totally clear, and the whites of the speculars should be totally black. So we'll see what we get. Our time is up. We are going to open this thing up. I'm going to tilt the camera down a little more, and we're going to open it up and see what is going on in here? And my fixer is old enough. I'm using it as a one shot as well. I'm just going to dump it out and then we're going to start rinsing. One of the things about Kodachrome is that black remjet backing and some pieces of that start coming off in the initial rinse. I was hoping a couple of them splatted up on the sink. I was hoping that a couple of them would be there and you could actually see what's going on. But we'll we'll do that. If there's any left on here, we'll wipe it off with our fingers. So let's see what we have going on. And it looks to me like uh, we got nothing. Like base fog is insane on this film. Like it must have been hit with total radiation or something. Well, that's it. That's what we came up with. An almost black roll of film. I bought three rolls of this expired Kodachrome film, and I think it's been hit with some type of radiation of some kind. Film is a light sensitive product, and light is basically a form of radiation. Back when film was prevalent and airport security used a much stronger x-ray system, we would ask to have our camera bags inspected by hand and we would put our rolls of film in a lead bag. It would look like a lunch bag, but it was made out of lead. And you'd put your rolls of film in there and roll it up so those x-rays couldn't get through and ruin your film. But this truly is one of the dangers of using old and expired film. When I was a working professional in the days of film photography, not only would I order fresh film, but I would refrigerate it and sometimes freeze it to keep it fresh and as fresh as possible. So with that film fresh, I was pretty much guaranteed at all times that the photographs would turn out. People were paying me to produce images that they wanted of critical life events. And we couldn't mess around with stuff like this. That is the fun thing with having a YouTube channel like this, is we can experiment and we can have some fun. But I'm pretty convinced that these other two rolls of Kodachrome are going to be worthless. So I'm going to come up with a different kind of project for these. If you have any ideas, 
leave them in the comments section below. Hey, if you want to see how I copy these negatives, how I got them into the computer, I've got a video linked right here for you. If you're interested in film photography, check out this playlist right here. I've got my subscription information right here, and who knows, there's probably another video on the screen right here. I'm James Fisher. This is Vintage Inside Photography. Thanks. Thanks for coming along in this adventure.